Hi everyone, Michelle from Holistic Pillars. Um, it's an absolute honour again to welcome Rob Hart. Hi Rob. Hello Michelle. Rob uh, uh, revisits us today, but he comes with um, 20 plus years in um, the corporate sector across the globe. Um, he has a background in wellbeing, human performance and psychology. He's also the founder of Zest Learning. Um, but most recently, or probably over the last 18 months or so, has been um, with AGL, um, helping and supporting employees there. Um, and that's where our paths have crossed. So hi, Rob. Thanks again for coming along. Oh, it's always a pleasure, Michelle. And thanks for having me again. I hope uh, we can help Holistic Pillars with some new insights this time. Not just Holistic Pillars, but the people, yeah. Um, now, I just wanted to know a little bit more or tell people a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so um, I've worked in wellbeing for a good uh, good few years now and began in the corporate sector back in the 90s, but uh, moved to Australia about 18 years ago. And I've always been around the energy, oil and gas sectors and mining and resources because I think their mental health is a really big thing, a big challenge people are dealing with, particularly in FIFO, where people are away from their families. Mm -hmm. And equally too, there's ever-changing uh, challenges for our environment that we work with and also as well I think there's a massive thirst out there for this kind of information at the moment and when you present it with a bit of evidence base a bit of science even the cynics can start to buy into it so it's kind of that's what we're trying to pioneer at the moment and make it accessible for people and make it not so scary to come and talk about well-being and mental health. Beautiful um, I'm really excited about the topic today but we're going to chat about um, ch checking in checking in with yeah. people but it's Definitely. particularly timely, timely because we have Are You OK Day next week, the Thursday, the 9th of September. Definitely. So I really want to drill down to what is Are You OK Day? How do we check in? Um, so I'm going to be a bit over to you. So can you tell me a bit about Are You OK Day? Yep, Are You OK Day was initially set up a few years ago. Uh, to look at trying to prevent suicide. Now, that's always a controversial and quite confronting word to say straight off the bat. So we do need to address that's what it's about. We were seeing that people were struggling in the workplaces, didn't want to speak up. And very often there's great evidence that shows that peer groups are a great support. So to, to, ask, to, to ask, are you okay? We wanted to, well, not we, are you okay? They wanted to make sure they could create a campaign that was accepted widely across a number of corporate environments, schools, workplaces, and pretty much in society as well. Because often we will say, hey, how are you? And people go, oh, I'm okay. But the thing about are you okay is to ask if they're really okay. Are they really okay? And that's the key thing about it today. So it came out about giving the opportunity to have a day where we stop, we think about it, we ask, we, we build some skills and people are not suddenly pounced upon just in the course of their day. It's a dedicated day. And hopefully what it does, it enables us to learn the skills on the day, practice it, and then keep it going for the rest of the year. So it's a launch pad to get to enable those conversations, very simply. And that's the point that I love. It's not just one day. It's mm. giving people the skills and awareness to carry that through, you know, every day. Exactly. But then it's about how do you ask, are you okay? How do you ask, yeah. And how do you ask, there are some steps which we'll have a look at in a moment. But do you think, Michelle, as well, sometimes when we, we feel like we need to ask, okay, it's helpful to spot the signs. And particularly with spotting the signs, that can be the most challenging part. All of us at the moment, we're in lockdown, many of us here in Victoria at the moment, and you know, today is uh, early September and it may well change in a few months if you're looking at this down the track. But I'm sure all of us across Australia have experienced some form of disruption due to the pandemic. Uh, of course, many sectors that we work in are going through restructures, challenges, changes, and this is ever present. So when we're spotting the signs, it's a lot easier when you're coming to the same office every day or you see the same people every day and you can spot to start to see if their voices kind of become a bit softer, a bit more retreated, a bit more withdrawn, or they're not quite themselves or they're not usual with their usual verve and energy. So it's harder when we're on team meetings like this to be able to spot that. So something I'd say the telltale signs are number one, are people getting a little bit more agitated there's a thing called low frustration tolerance out there at the moment and psychologists will talk to that that it's lots of complexity and uncertainty building stress and so people start to think it's just not enough time in the day so they get a bit snappy a bit erratic a bit, a bit frustrated and that can come out with short 
emails, curt ways of behaving, and it's not usual for some people to be like them. The other one too is quite the opposite. It's withdrawal, where people just clam up and don't want to talk anymore. They may have their camera off in all the meetings. They may not answer questions or emails. They may have checked out temporarily. And to me, withdrawn is typically more, uh, Michelle, I don't know if you, you've recognised this as well, but it's typically more a male trait that when people are stressed, men tend to withdraw a little bit and go quieter. Mm. Statistically, ladies tend to tend and befriend and will want to talk it out with somebody and are naturally more uh, attuned to that. That's a big generalisation, but if you look at the clinical evidence in the middle of the bell curve, as we always do, that tends to be the, the trend. Equally as well, if people are complaining about just feeling a bit flat, being quite negative and cynical a lot more than they usually would be, they're starting to become more pessimistic and maybe starting to be hardwired to look for the negatives in things. So those are the things I would suggest. That shows us a heightened risk of, of, of them needing to have a, a chat to somebody. And that's just also in the corporate world, but I guess we can apply that to just behaviours out there. Yeah, yeah many, many of our children at school, homeschooling, maybe missing their peer group, relatives, friends. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can start to see that. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, Michelle, but many of us spend a lot of time in, in corporate life, particularly on lots of phone calls. And while we might be engaged with those full and wholeheartedly in the office and at home, we then want to check in with our immediate family and our household. I've actually found it quite difficult to start ringing people in the evenings because you spend mm -hmm. a lot of time talking in the day. Mm -hmm. And it's just making sure that if I do think someone's at risk, yeah, putting that in the calendar, being quite deliberate about it, making time for it. And, and just picking the phone up if you know someone who could be at risk in your network. That's something to consider as well. Fantastic. Um, how to ask and what would be top to ask. Yeah, how to ask. So for everyone on the call here, I know from experience, Many of us have, have been here who've learned counselling techniques, who've learned how to engage in quite difficult discussions with people, what they're facing. And it can be really daunting to walk up to someone and go, hey, are you OK? Because you don't know how they're going to respond. Are You OK Day have got some great resources on their website. And um, it is just simply um, are you OK? .org.au if you're interested it says are you okay as in the letters .org.au they've got a four-step process and I'll, and I'll share those but we'll open those up a little bit mm -hmm. first of all is ask are you okay secondly the big thing here is listen listen <laughs> then encourage action but when we say encourage action it's not to fix the problem and then the fourth step is check in so step one ask step two listen step three encourage action and step four check in now, that's not a quick two minute discussion. So <laughs> it's doing this properly to ask, are you OK? Have a think about when you one, pick your moment. It's no point if you're on an MS Teams meeting or Zoom meeting and there's five other people and you just point out and go, hey, Michelle, are you OK? And, you know, that's a pretty daft way to do it. But it's trying to find a moment where you can you can be side by side or, or out for a walk if it's a peer, peer group member or family member or just drop a line and say, hey, uh, are you free for a chat? We'd like to catch up. And during that chat, naturally, as the time builds, you can say, hey, I've noticed, you, I've noticed lately that you're not quite yourself. That's a good in. That's a way of asking. Are you OK? What's happening for you right now? What's on your plate? There's another good way to say it. And then there's the point where you sit back. People will tell you anything if you ask a question and then listen. There's nothing more powerful than hearing your own problem being shared with another out loud. You hear your words, they hear them. And if you're on the receiving end of it, the listening is purely just some nodding, some encouragement, and maybe, a, wow, I can see that must be challenging for you. Can you tell me a little bit more about what's happening? And just to encourage them to keep going, because often people are worried about burdening us with their problems. Uh, or they may feel a bit embarrassed about what's happening. But again, you can also say, I'm listening here without judgment, and this is a, a big deal for you right now, and I'm, I'm here to support you. And I, I will just listen, and that's all I'm here to do right now. Once the person has talked a little bit more, it's good to sort of hook back in and say, what have you, have you considered so far to, to help you along? Anything you've thought about? And they may have said, well, I've spoken to the employee assistance program or this is the first time I've spoken about it. And you can simply there ask, um, OK, well, what, what might be some things that would help you in the, in the short term? And if they say, oh, nothing, really, it's a terrible, terrible situation I'm facing. When you encourage action on step three, it is very much to say, well, what, what are some things you can enjoy doing? Do you like watching a movie? Do you like going for a walk? Do you like to get outside or listen to some music? 
Um, would you like to catch up again? It's little things like this that give them a reminder there are some easy things they can do for themselves. You're not going to fix the issue, right? Um, and then check in. The important thing about checking in is to say, hey, would you mind if I give you a call in a week or so again? And we can just catch up to see how things have, have progressed for you. What are, what are things, would, would that be helpful? So it doesn't have to be really professional counselling. It's just to acknowledge and, and someone to feel acknowledged. How's that, Michelle? Is that a good starting point for your question there? That's a very good starting point. But what if you don't know the answer? Ah, there's a good thing. Now, any good coach will tell you that <laughs> you don't have to know <laughs> the answer. Uh, if I look at uh, tennis players, their coaches probably aren't better tennis players than them. They'll, they'll just give them some little techniques. If, if knowing the answer is the thing that you're worried about, which often it is, I think many of us are craving certainty a lot of the time. And our brains don't like uncertainty. They like answers. They like solutions. And I'm talking to the men out here very much um, to say to you, there has often been an analogy where, you know, our partner will come home and they'll talk to you about work or whatever. And, and the men will immediately go, oh, I need to fix that and give us some advice. Not what we're looking for here. We're looking to be heard and listened to. And the thing is here is ask them where you can support. Don't have to have the answers. Don't ever feel, don't put that pressure on yourself. Mm -hmm. And I've said before in a few sessions I've run, the biggest communication problem we face is listening to reply, not listening to understand. So uh, to really repeat back what the person has said, so it looks like you've got some challenges with your, your sibling or your workload is a bit stressful or you've got a bit of a conflict with your boss or a colleague. That I can recognize that must be hard for you. What, what's, some, what's some ways that you're thinking about about dealing with it how mm. can i help you did you want to just talk through some ideas or some choices you're making here that's the kind of way to do it don't give them the answer they don't want to hear that mm. Mm. it's just knowing what to say right mm. Once. yeah so sometimes yeah. yeah trying to work out what to say yeah, even, even to say to them, what choices are you considering is a good one because that puts it back on them but allows you to listen a bit more and encourage that that's a good way to have a look at it sometimes and it's respectful too. I think there's some don'ts. It's pretty much don't say, oh, I know how you feel. Or, oh, look on the bright side. These are the sort of platitudes which confuse and alienate the person who's sharing their story because it looks, it's a platitude, it's glib. And, and this doesn't really let you listen more. You're just trying to smooth it over. Mm. Is there anything that you can think of that stops people from actually reaching out or asking? Yeah. Uh, I think there's a trepidation and fear because we don't want to be imposing ourselves sometimes culturally too there's some cultures that don't like to be individualistic they think about solving problems collectively also too there could be just you know if you if, if you're working with somebody a bit more senior in the workplace who you see struggling a bit they they may feel a bit insubordinated and and there is often a perception i often will think to myself how if i was in this state would i want someone to ask me probably would you know mm -hmm. so the fear is do i look like i'm i'm poking my nose in or, or being nosy or being you know unhelpful or putting more pressure on them often that then becomes about us not not the person mm. and I don't think there's any harm in just saying hey look I just noticed would you would you be open for a chat and there you go it's uh yeah there's another little note I wrote here um preparing for the conversation the are you okay prop is there any tips that you can provide with you know? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Now consider how we are all very busy and that's always been the case, hasn't it? Ever since the pre-pandemic and, you know, when you ask people, how are you? Oh, busy, stressed, busy. But it almost became a status, a badge of honour that we should be busy. And if we're not, you know, if, if you say to someone, oh, the, the times are suiting me pretty well, you almost look a bit smug and a bit, <laughs> bit uh, disjointed. So how do you prepare? Number one, allocate time. There's no, there's no, honestly, there's no point in, in ringing somebody at 11 o'clock if you've got an important meeting at 11.15. Allow at least half an hour, maybe more if you've got the opportunity. And that is also a thing that stops people asking. So allow the time because it may unfold. Mm -hmm. Two, prepare yourself. Prepare yourself to listen. Make sure that you're not frazzled and stressed getting to it and looking, looking uh, disinterested or disengaged. Make sure you are receptive. And, and something to think about preparing there is... If you're ringing somebody, they may not want to be on the screen. So it could just be a mobile phone call or it could be 
you know, a, a mm. walk in the park is often a bit easier, I find, or sat side by side in a car if it's a family member or going for a walk. It's less confrontational. Equally too, just giving space to listen again. It's uh, often we, we're really enthusiastic to help, but uh, again, just trying to temper back and make our body language look receptive too. Simple things like open palm gestures and sitting back with your arms and legs uncrossed so that you look receptive and open. You're not judging and leaning forward, your hands ringing, just looking calm and in control is a nice way, nice way to do that. Mm, definitely. Um, we've done ahead of conversations, we've reached out, with. It's sort of like, what next? How do we then go about checking back yeah. in or engage, doing that engagement? Is there any tips there? Very important one. The follow-up's very important here. So the fourth step is uh, in, in Are You OK Day was definitely around um, following up checking in as they call it so we've got ask listen encourage action so you may have encouraged an action not again not fix the problem but said hey have you thought about going out for a walk or calling somebody else that you like or watching a movie da, 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 da. when we check in we'll say give them a definite time say when works for you it would be really helpful to catch up in the next week I, I i just want to check in and see how you're going because that may well be a lifeline to them, quite literally. They may be thinking, oh, good, I'm going to catch up with Michelle again in, on Wednesday. And they may look forward to that. That's something in isolation and lockdown that people will see that there is something on the horizon to consider. But it will also call them to action because they know that you're going to ask, how did it go? And they may think, well, rather than procrastinate, I'm going to do something. So after you've had the are you OK, what happens next? If the person is really distressed and I have to be honest here, if they say to you that they've considered contemplating some quite bleak outcomes, such as harming themselves or, or taking their own life, because do remember, are you okay day is a catalyst to prevent that happening. It's definitely worth saying, do you, would, you, would you need me to call um, an emergency service or, or a doctor or wait with you for a while? Again, that's the really extreme and, and quite frankly, it's quite a rare occurrence. So don't let that deter you from asking a question. If it's the more milder response though, it's simply to say, hey, why don't we catch up next time and do something different? Would you like a coffee? Would you like to go for a walk? Would you like to meet in person if we're able to during, lock during lockdown? Having a bit of a plan for what you'll talk about next. Uh, would you like me to um, listen again to how you've progressed? It's just giving them a sense of what will happen next. It's very helpful. And also, if you feel they need support, you can give them a, a phone line number, which we'll do at the end of the session. And, and that's often quite nice to remind them of that support too. I just think it's um, it's obviously a critical time right now, with given the environment we're in, and these techniques are really key to, like you say, the four steps. Um, that yeah. they're, they're you know making sure it becomes almost habitual that you just can you check in with these pe with people, um, and obviously have a level of compassion as well. Yeah, yeah. So, and you're gone. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. It's all yours. I was going to say, if they don't want to open up, it's often the thing if they say, are you okay? And I go, no, I'm not. Or why? Mm -hmm. You know, it's the sort of the sort of things that can be a little bit tricky. I think many people get what's going on and, and will probably say, um, yeah, I'm, I'm okay to talk now or, or can we talk another time? But if they do, just try and fix the time. It's, it's helpful to say, um, please call me if you ever want to chat or is there anyone else you'd rather talk to? It's, it's just good to remind them of that too. And many of us in corporate life have an employee assistance program you can refer them to as well. And I know that we at AGL have that and, and also in other corporations I work with too. So it's just another angle they can get on something. I think too, with, with having somebody who's not in their immediate family or social circle, if it's a work colleague, that can be quite, quite satisfying. So again, just to, to, to let them know there is a, a unique link they can have with you. And, and again, maintain that you'll be confidential about it. That's a key thing to get the trust. Fantastic, Rob. Um, great, great insights here. Now, the next step is professional help. So is there where yeah. we guide people to if we needed, mm. you know, to give people some additional support or guide them in a direction? Yeah, and Michelle, there's three steps. Um, for you, again, just to close out your support, pop a reminder in both your calendars. That's a key thing. Oh, okay. um, you know, to do that, that's a cool one for you. And then professional support, if you feel they need it, would be, there's two options here. Are You Okay Day is affiliated with Lifeline if you're in Australia watching this. And the number for that is 131114. That's again, 131114. And Lifeline are a 24 seven 
support service there for, for trained counsellors to talk a bit about um, dealing with, with things like uh, if you have a fear of taking your own life or you're worried about taking things a bit more seriously around uh, uh, getting better as well. All these things they can help you with. Equally too, we know that many children and teens are, are struggling with this pandemic and certainly the, the, the times around our Are You OK Day. The number there for, for, for the child line phone number is again a free number. It's one 800 551800 that number again 1800 551800 and that's a child line which has specific counselors from age five upwards rather up into the teens and and, uh, and that whole spectrum now equally too just a word of uh, advice in september 2021 where we're recording this psychologists and health professionals may not be quite as easy to access as they used to be there's lots of reports coming out at the moment that many psychologists are overwhelmed and inundated with three to six month waiting lists. And equally too, many of them are reducing hours due to the sheer levels of burnout that they've been going through themselves, trying to manage an ever increasing load of uh, mental health challenges we see in society. But it ne not, doesn't necessarily all mean doom and gloom. Um, your GP can help with trying to find someone who's available to you. You can go to get a Medicare supplemented support there professionally. But equally too, it does shine a light on even more why we need to ask, are you OK this year? And really ask, are you OK? To make sure you're supporting your colleagues and peers. All the evidence shows that a kind word from a peer and of someone in their network can really add a lift to their mental health positively. And I think okay. app, I, I, it's just, yeah, perfect. Um, meant to, you know, check-ins, are you okay day? Mm. It's, not, it's not just on the 9th of September. It's no. all the time. Um, reaching out, checking in, um, following up, and then also um, knowing that there's additional support there through the lifelines. Um, definitely, so definitely. Thanks so much yeah. for this Quick summary, Rob. Um, That's a pleasure. More, but, uh, there is some more information I'll put in the blog and also in in the um, description about where you can get additional help. Um, but thanks so much for your insights and support yet again. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. I'm sure it's really valuable for your that you're doing this as well for your network. So thank you. It's a nice gesture from your side too. Lovely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks. Bye.